oh my God, we've lost our minds. Actually had an argument with Doug over this next giveaway. And because I'm so persistent and I'm the one that's on the camera, I get, I win, I actually win. And because I win, you win. So here's what we're doing. Here's the giveaway. You ready for this? So today's episode is a live Q and A. We often give away free programs to listeners. So here's what I said. All the programs we gave to the listeners or to the people calling in, why don't we package them together together and give them to one lucky viewer? So you ready for this? Here's what you can win today if you leave a comment in the first 24 hours, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. You can win Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, Maps Aesthetic, Maps Anabolic, and Maps Performance. All those programs will go to one lucky viewer who leaves the best comment. By the way, in the intro, Adam and I get into a debate about robots and where they're going to help us and are we going to fly to the moon first and all kinds of crazy stuff. Tell us who you agree with, me or Adam, and uh, the right answer will win <laughs> all those programs. <laughs> also, final hours. Final hours for our Map Strong and Maps Power Lift uh, give, uh, sale, right? So 50% off both programs, half off Strong, half off Power Lift, ends very soon. Go get those programs. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code August Special with no space for the discount. Okay. All right, here comes the show. So I, I get sent uh, stuff. I know you guys do too in your DMs all the time. Yeah. People like, check this out, or what do you think about yeah, this? Yeah. I think I have officially seen the stupidest business oh, dude. ever <laughs> in oh, yeah. Square E. Yeah, I sent it over to the main thread to to Doug and and you guys. And basically, it's these little 50-gram squares that are supposed to be packed full of nutrients and no preservative, supposedly, but it's supposed to have a long shelf life. And they're, they're literally a perfect little tiny square. And you and they come in a box with like four. You microwave them or you like heat them on the pan really quick, and you eat these things for a, like a full meal. It look, it, you know, what it reminds me of something that you would see from like a a sci fi, like yeah. futuristic, like you know how you always see like there are like just pills. Yeah. Now we'll never yeah. have to eat again. Because you know what's hard is like dealing with shapes. Because <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. shit is out of control. Yeah, you know, has any has nobody seen Soylent Green? I swear yeah. to God, they need to make that movie again. You know, that, if you ever. Was that, the, was that the drink? It's a sci-fi movie. It's made of people. It's you ruined it. You just gave away the ending. Oh, it's right. it's a it's a sci-fi movie from way back, and basically they live in the future and they don't eat food. They eat what's called soylent, soylent red, soylent whatever. And then when they reach a certain age, they you get to go off and fucking paradise. But this guy escapes and realizes that what they do with the old people is they kill them and turn them into yeah, food. They grind them up and and feed them. Yeah, people. and he's like, it's soil, it's green, it's people. Dude, yeah. <laughs> Talk about just trashing this company all the way. I know. <laughs> I mean, that's a science fiction there's movie. There's dead no bodies in there. We're going to get a lawsuit for that No, one. there's no dead bodies in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Holy yeah. cow. Minus the dead bodies. It yeah. just looked... Although, that'd be a really great way of recycling. Uh, so, anyway. okay, <laughs> what I, what I, what's, yeah, what's funny to me friendly. is that... Uh, I don't see much of a difference than comparing it to a bar. Yeah, like what is the is difference? It? Just the shape, like uh, it's well, it's maybe supposed to be compact. Doug, if you you watched it and you read it, did you? Is it? It's supposed to be natural ingredients and almost. Does it say there's no preservatives in order to, to? So is it supposed to be whole foods? Well, I mean, you have to refrigerate it. Well, here's their talking points: Square Eight is nutritionally balanced, subscription model, natural and fresh, easy to store. Versatile to warm up, minimal waste, easy to eat anywhere, long lasting. Okay, so so here's okay, here's the value in something like this. The value is in the shelf life, the uh, the packaging, and the ability to ship. Right. So what they've done is they've taken food, put it in a in a in a container in a shape that's easy to you, you probably minimal packing. You can store a lot of it very easily, and you can ship it very cheaply. Mm -hmm. So that helps with margins and it could potentially help with, I don't know, maybe getting food to places that's hard to get to, but I know that's not the goal. They're, they're what they're targeting are people who are like, oh, I gotta, yeah. I'm going to be on a plane or I'm going to be at school and I'd rather Plus have- Plus you can lay, make little buildings for your G.I. Joes, you know, <laughs> like, like stack them. You know what, you know, what cool. it, you know what's funny is that they're completely disregarding and so does every sci-fi movie that shows weird pills and stuff. I can't see from here, Doug. How much is a, t a standard meal? Uh, six fifty, eight dollars. It's not even it a good deal. No, you know, five fifty. Okay, they're completely disregarding that the the way food looks plays a very big role. Yeah. in its palatability. If it didn't, 
all processed food would be yeah. made into very easily shipped black ketchup little squares. Caught yes. on, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cheetos, Cheetos would be you know sheets of Cheetos that are easy for the. I mean, this has to be up there yeah. with like one of the worst ideas I've seen in a long time. And there's definitely there's a lot of money behind it. You can tell by the way they've put it together. You I know mean, what? It, it does remind me of the Jetsons. Remember mm -hmm. they were trying to like have these little tiny things that they just expand. You know, oh. you know, in some kind of Back uh, to the Future did that. Yeah, remember they? Oh they yeah, they had that too. The small pizza and the whatever that thing was. Yeah. I mean, I wish I wish them the best it. of luck in in their their ventures here and stuff like that. And I, I apologize because I'm I'm sure we're offending the shit out of the people that thought of this. But what I, if they I mean, send us a bunch and we, yeah. we eat them? We're like, but oh the my thing God. is, you gotta still microwave it. You gotta like pan sear it. I'm just like, this is they didn't like really necessarily tackle and you're the convenience. Still not getting a ton of of food for a, a basically a standard price of what a meal is. So it's not super cheap. Never underestimate the strange consumer market that's out there. Do you guys remember that? Uh, what was that shake that people in Silicon Valley? It's that was called Soylent. Yeah. Called it's called Soylent. Soylent. Oh, yeah. And they didn't even it's Soylent. And yeah, oh, my God. Me and you were like, wait a minute. Yeah. What, what the hell? They're tricking you. Yeah. And the, the selling point literally, and this is what they did. They sold this to techies. And the, the that you'd never have to get up from your yeah yeah oh man doesn't it suck when you got to get up and eat <laughs> and you got to chew your what food? what a waste of time I mean you could be coding you could yeah. be programming and coding for your slave masters at Google whatever anyway yeah, yeah. and people were doing this they're like oh man food is such a pain in the ass I just drink this stuff all there over it is. now yeah. this is still hey, just throw me a this square, is exploding bro. still isn't it Doug I don't know. I I, again, I don't think this was a fad. I think this is still pretty popular in that space. That that's what I'm saying. Never underestimate like these pockets of markets of weirdos. Right. Like mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like they're the ones that will look at this and be like, "Wow, that's like it's like my drink." Except now I can chew a little yeah. bit. It's super. Like, I find it amazing hard. that they can use the name Soylent, especially based on the after that movie, and oh, get yeah. away with it. Well, think about it. It's, you're if you're catering to techie nerds which you know i'm not a techie but i'm definitely a, a, can be a nerd like that they probably think it's cool yeah, oh, yeah. it's probably like that, true this is like that movie it's like those dead bodies were dreaming yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so cool it's i like my dark chocolate mint how about yeah. you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I mean so i, I guess enemies. i guess the thing to me with the, this this other company this square eat company or whatever like that that i don't see it there's nothing really revolutionary about it or that different from a product like this. No. Yeah. Instead of it being in a bottle or in a protein bar wrapper, it's in these little... They just little... take real food, they smash it, and then they yeah, you know, just, make I a Play-Doh disc out of it. And even the way that it's... Uh, the, you know, the whole thing is about the uh, the shipping size on it, but they send it in a fucking box that's just as big as a box of a regular meal. So it's not, so it's in this box that's like this big for yeah. those four little squares. So what's the, what, what is it really saving space uh, They should just put it in a tube. You know, like toothpaste, you know, just squirt in your face, and now you got some meat or whatever. Weird, yeah. though. Yeah. Really have you guys, weird. So along these lines, have you guys seen the new? So they passed this bill. I love it when uh, when the government tries to improve our health by passing bills that they think are going to help, which they never do. But this new bill is going to change how food is labeled. Have you seen this? Okay, I mean, we've no. done this a few times. So I sent what's this. One? Oh yeah, I sent this to Doug. And it's not going to work, just like everything else that they've ever tried. It's not going to help. But nonetheless, the goal was to simplify food labeling by giving it a score right on the front of the packaging. A, B, C, D, or F, I think it is. And who the decides the, the... Yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like right there. Do you see that, that picture? And how much money these companies have to pay to get a better rating. Okay, so... Very interesting. It's not going to. This is terrible. First of all, here's why it's not going to work. Is it passed? Reason. By the way, is this is it going into? It's effect? going to happen. The the bill passed, and they're working on it. And I'm sure it's going to cost us. You know, I don't know how many trillions of dollars to to, to do this. Ugh. But the uh, the it's here's why it's not going to work. One, labels don't work because people don't care. You know who cares? Healthy people. You know what healthy people will do they'll if there avoid. was no labels? <laughs> they'll still figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This has been proven time and time again. Labels, nobody gives a shit about the label. In fact, there were studies done in certain towns where they required restaurants to lab to put calories next to the foods. Mm -hmm. People ended up eating more because instead of yeah. saying that has 500 more calories, it's this a, brownie has less calories than well, the salad. Plus, it's yeah. also okay. What makes okay? If I'm a client, right? Next meal, Susie, this is what I want you to eat. Uh, eat. What makes it a, an A or an F is completely dependent on. 
what she's eaten already in the day and all, what her goals are, and that could change. Bio and individuality. Could, so how I want to how does the scoring work? What what dictates an A and what what dictates an well, E or an F? It's based. It's going to be based off of what the FDA considers healthy, which is probably grain heavy. Uh, it's plant heavy, low meat, right? Low, you know, certain types of fats, especially saturated fats. It's all based off of that. Now we know as people in the fitness space and health space that they've been wrong the, like forever. Like they're never right. Like if you follow the food pyramid, it might work for some people for most it's not. And these organizations, uh, or these big, uh, you know, big food companies, partner very closely with government yeah. to, oh, you know, well, yeah, make sure that ours is included in the good score because it's whole grain. It's corn, after, after all. That's a whole grain. We put this thing's made of 100% corn, so that's going to be good, right? Or is not ketchup a vegetable? Definitely. So make sure you put it in the vegetable category. But that's that's the idea. I so mean, did you read this whole article? Because there's got to be some sort of a, a format that... There's got, does it break down, Doug? Could yeah, you like the, yeah, what, what it, determines an A, B, yeah, C that, that's, score? Give me, like, is it the uh, balance of macronutrients? Is it the calorie the range of, that yeah. it's in? Is it the amount of preservatives the density that are in of, or ingredients? density uh, of nutrients per calorie, yeah. Like, is a banana an A or an E? Like it because you know, is it what what and what makes it an A? Is it an A because it's a fruit and it's it's whole a whole food, or is it actually an E because it only has carbohydrates and sugar and not a, no protein or, or fat really? You know what's funny? Or minimal. If, if since the, since they're spending so many tax dollars on all this stuff, I'd love to make it like a proposition to the government. I'll tell you what: you pay us one tenth of what you spent on this, we'll save everybody a lot of money, and then we'll put out guidelines, and the guidelines will be super easy. Here's what they're gonna say. Eat is less. it is it processed or not? That's it. That's it. Is it is it one ingredient or is a lot of ingredients? Pick that, and we know that that'll tend to lead people in the right way. But this cracks me up. Like one of the things it said was like, if it says whole grain, they have to tell you how much of it is whole grain. Mm -hmm. If it says it's got vegetables, it's got to tell you how much vegetables are in there. That's not going to make a difference. No, no, nobody cares. Apparently, they're already uh, doing this in France. Yeah, really. Um, mm. So they have this system where it goes from green, which is an A to red, which is an E, and then all the colors in between. So this is how they're proposing it works. They call it a traffic light icon. The idea might be to make the light red if it's uh, full of sugars and fats, for example, or green if it was low fat and full of vitamins and yellow if it was in between. So there you go. So what you could literally do is take a, you guys remember when we were kids, the commercials for Total Cereal? Almost three boxes of Special K to equal the vitamin and mineral nutrition in just one box of Total. Maybe grape nuts. You'll have to put away four boxes. Okay. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you need to eat you know, this many bowls of the other cereal to equal the vitamins and minerals of Total. Right. Total has no fat, and they throw a bunch of vitamins and minerals in there. Yeah. That would get an A. Fortify the hell out of it, yeah. That would get an A, right? Multivitamin cereal would get an A. But what a stupid idea. Of course. I, 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 this way I'm saying, if this was market-based, then you would see if it worked and it didn't, and it would lose funding. This is not going to lose funding. It's a lot of money that goes to this, and really what it is is it's favors and partnerships with really big what it is food bureaucracy companies. it's just adding more jobs and positions that are bullshit positions to pay people that's <laughs> yeah. all this really is it's literally a gangster hustle by governments to go like i got an idea yeah, there, but we know that obesity is on the rise people are dying like crazy so they will totally yeah. approve us passing They're not this. buying our corn we're going to pitch it as we're trying to help you make better decisions in the grocery store meanwhile knowing it is unbelievably nuanced and individualized for everybody and that could change meal to meal day to yeah. day you know literally it's that crazy. Oh, and by the way, uh, we'll, you know, you guys, as long as you give us a lot of money to, for the, my next political campaign, I'll make sure that. That's your how food's... we're going to back. So we're going to get yeah. <laughs> we're going to get paid to do this bullshit already, which is is going to mean nothing. And then on top of that, we're going to hustle all these companies to get some backdoor money too. I, totally. Yep. For oh, sure, this is a hustle. Dude. It makes me so mad when I see stuff like what that. What a stupid stuff. idea. Yeah. You know what? And what? Who are all the stupid people that approve or vote for it? Like. It's you, okay. Here's the thing. Look at the name of the bill. I forgot what it was, but it's yeah. always named save something. lives. Yeah, yeah. Or something <laughs> like that. Like, you know. Vote yes on save lives. Yeah. If not, I mean, you don't care. That like, sounds good. <laughs> it's like the Patriot Act. Patriot Act. You know, read the read it. You know, oh, we can uh, read your emails and wiretap you with no. Yeah, it's called the food, Three in jail. What's it called? What's it called? The Food Labeling Modernization Act of 2021. Okay, Who doesn't want food nice, labels to be modernized? This is not I mean, as bad as what I. Say. We have to modernize things. <laughs> yeah. you guys. No, we yeah. don't. 
don't need to fuck my Hey, speaking with. of like we need square food. Stupid <laughs> crazy ideas and, you know, soilent dead people weird shit all this stuff so <laughs> totally this I'm is right line. This, this is a great transition going. into yeah. what i just I'm saw excited. the other day we're starting so, out real positive today i know well did you guys okay you guys remember uh we we were working with liquid death for a little bit and yeah. you know they did their whole you know you donate your blood to satan and all that <laughs> no, they, it was they, sign they, your soul to date sell satan. your soul yeah for, right for like a box of it right right i mean they yeah. really i they, mean they, they went, went they went all in. they went all in on the like the, yeah. the fucking satanism type stuff yeah, right right so did you see what they did with tony hawk no oh you guys haven't seen this i mean i saw that they had a board that oh. they were gonna sell his but so wait wait he put so, some of his blood in every in the paint oh. so Whoa. they drew his blood no mixed it in with the red paint and then painted graphics on the board and they sold it uh, and, and they, of course they were like donating to like a good cause i don't remember what the good cause was but so some some yeah. of the money is going satan's kids you yeah. know look it up Doug. dude <laughs> yeah. tony hawk uh blood board i saw this this, I this, did see this. What? I think that's smart. I mean, it's like the little Nas Satan it's shoes. A, that's it, man. I think it's just uh, pop culture. They, they see what's dude, trending, and they're like, oh, let's cash in on this. That's nothing, dude. Remember that girl? There was that, that social media girl you who- think that's nothing? I think that's all the, No, no, no. There was that social media girl that all these kid, guys thought she was hot or whatever. She took a bath, sold the bath water, and made a shit ton of money. Do you guys remember this? It was like this. So that's less weird to me because I know there's people that have weird fetishes with shit like that, like dirty. I mean, we talked about the panties thing in, you know, yeah. in China with the vending machine Japan. that Doug used to always buy or whatever like that when he was Doug there. Didn't buy that. I did not. Okay. <laughs> For the record, I did not. <laughs> You're so rolling him on the bus. Jeez, <laughs> Louise. <Yeah. laughs> Doug's like, wait. You love them vending machines. I mean, that's Doug. the only way we knew about it. Oh, we didn't man. know about it until D Doug This can't be Doug. real. <laughs> oh, let me test it out again. I just knew friends of it. Okay, you guys. I just knew friends. No, that's. That, they actually did. They actually have that. I know. So I that. mean, that's to me. There's people that have like weird sexual fetishes, but this is like a what fetish is this? It's I'll, just cool. It's, it's just cool. Okay, yeah, I want a skater to get cut and bleed all the time. I mean, I think it's kind of cool. It's kind of whatever. Yeah. It's it's different. Let me put it this you, way. You got a blood bond with Tony Hawk. Yeah. Let me put it this mean? way. You're a skating fan, by the way. I mean, it sold out. By the way, too. Of course. Completely sold Dude, out. Okay. Tony Hawk's yeah, it's been, a novel thing. Right? Tony Hawk's been skating and been the the guy. Yeah, he's the all time greatest. Right. But yeah. but. All think of all of us like hardcore fans now are in their forties probably they make money, and you could get a skateboard that's signed by him. That's a good point. This one's got his blood. That's a, that's a good point. Totally. Yeah, literally. I mean, even my, even myself, if uh, you know, I was like an older guy who used to skateboard and a diehard fan, like it'd be a cool collectible. Yeah, because you know it's not going to be done a bunch not, of time. You can't. You I'm can not going to go so buy George Lucas <laughs> blood, dude. If he has a poster of it, that's just <laughs> fucking weird, dude. Can we just say like shit is weird? Like, yeah. is, 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 are we like not allowed to even like point that out anymore? Yeah. We've always like this shit's weird, dude. Yeah. What what's going on? We've always been weird though. Do you guys know that gladiators used to bottle their sweat and sell it? So the, the Roman gladiators would scrape the sweat off their bodies. They would bottle it, and women would buy it. Like at like at, at their you know people selling it at the fights or whatever. Shut up. And they, I swear to God, no. they would buy the sweat and it was like an you, aphrodisiac yeah, or whatever. You got to buy that as a dude and just like throw it on you. you yeah. Know, like, hey, uh, hey, girls. Yeah. Isn't I mean, I guess that's not that different than what they've been doing in sports forever too, where people will buy someone's in-game worn jersey and stuff like that. You know, they want to, they want them, and it's you know they played in it, sweated in it, it's got grass <laughs> stains Jordan. all over it. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. it who's gonna is anyone, okay? Who's gonna be the first person to sell their poop? That's what I want to know. Come on, guys. it's probably already been done. It, it, sure. It has. I'm yeah. sure it. I'm sure it has been. If done. you do that, you're the ultimate like business person. I mean, I think if you're selling <laughs> blood and doing weird shit like that, you True. probably sell. Yeah, probably sold your freaking feces too. Yeah. I don't see uh, why they wouldn't have done that. Oh, speaking of like weird shit. So we literally this just happened, right? OnlyFans. Oh yes. We're not gonna have porn on anymore. <laughs> yeah. Reverse. <laughs> Wait a minute. That, that, now, Justin, your theory I thought was pretty good. Yeah, well, to well, me, uh, like everything else, like it, it, it's starting to look completely like a formula. Like, what's to stop them from? Let's put it out that like our biggest reason that people even are interested in our product. Let's take that away and shock everybody, right? And then, oh yeah, I guess we should put it back. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we should put it back. That's they get all this press around it. Smart. Yeah. Publicity that's, actually, that's actually not a bad theory at all. I mean, that's totally. kind of like the, the is is a strategy that a lot of companies are doing now is is jumping on the the shock and awe thing. It's completely obvious. We got to figure it out, you guys. Did you know I read an article too that you know where a lot of this woke culture is coming from with companies? Hmm. There's called a, a, a EcoScore. 
Doug, maybe you can help me find this. I, I was unaware of this. And it makes you, uh, it's part part of that scoring system uh, makes it easier for you to take on funding and money. Mm. And and so you have to be doing something to give back to the, to or the world. Or follow their guidelines or whatever. Yes, their oh, guidelines. Oh, wow. And so what you see with a lot of these companies, this whole, and what we call woke culture and shit like that, that's because it increases this score. Evo or eco score. Is that what's it called? Yeah, EcoScore. I'm pulling this up. It looks almost uh, like the nutritional thing that they're doing as well. Man, they have a green to red type yes. of a uh, system. Yeah, d- yeah, and and nobody thinks like, oh, have you seen China's uh, social scoring system? Yeah. And, and we're not implementing. these I just thought this was really interesting mm. because I we used to say things like it's you know it's just them trying to be okay. Here it is right here, EcoScore. So by doing this, but this has more to do with the environment though, doesn't it? It does, no. no, it doesn't have to be that. There's there's other factors that play in a role in the eco. So if you have a good score, then it's easier to get to get funding. Funding and and money. investors are specifically looking for companies that score high on this. Okay. So you have a lot of these companies. Well, here's the deal. Okay, mm. this is definitely market driven. So fine. And if it's really that bad, then companies will probably forget the funding. They'll no, lose consumers. No, I, I bring it up more. I just thought it was interesting because before I thought it was more of a company. We talk about Nike pandering or Gillette was pandering to, you know, the woke culture, but it's less of that and it's more related to this. Oh, interesting. It's less about pandering to, because remember we've made this before where we've said like, are you sure that's a good move, Gillette? I mean, that you are t- attacking all your these- Your number one base. <laughs> yeah, your number yeah. one base. Like, but if are douchebags. The like, main goal has to do with their eco score and getting more funding or selling the company- yeah. Then it makes more sense to me that it's like you know at that rate that's not they're not trying to worry they're not worrying about who they're going to piss off or yeah. not. Also, I think uh, back to what Justin was saying, you know that what's that old saying like all publicity or all uh, negative yeah. publicity is good or all publicity is good or something oh, like that. Yeah, exactly. So, and I think that's I think that's definitely true to an extent. Like you, you bring a lot of attention. I wonder. No, if, I think that's a smart. I think that's. A I very wonder good point. if OnlyFans. Now, because they reversed, if they had this all of a sudden this surge of new customers, or maybe people who'd never heard of OnlyFans before are reading all these articles saying, oh, they're taking off. I don't know. They had naked, you know, whatever. All right, whatever. And then the next day, like, oh, they got it back. Let me go check them out. You know? Yeah. Who knows? So I have another trend. That we, is- we need to sell fitness programs that don't um, involve fitness. Yeah. Fatness programs. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, let's get do fat, it, you guys. See what happens. Yeah. yeah. I, another trend that's happening right now that I didn't know of, and this is, I think is fucking brilliant for people doing this. This is uh, and really popular where we're at here in the Silicon Valley. A lot of people are working two jobs, double dipping, and mm. not saying they're, and they're not disclosing that they are, but because they're so, so two full time jobs. Yes. Oh, because they work at home. Because they're working at home. There's so oh. many people remote working mm. that they can. Now, get I can a, do this eight hour a day job in four hours. That's right. right. And they Whoa. and they lie and they say it's their only job and because it's all virtual they just toggle back and forth and the only time that it comes a challenge is when there's meetings that conflict yeah, right and they were talking about how they've got all these strategies Skip on to how your to, pieces yeah, yeah, yeah. they talked about hey, that. man if you can do your job and you're doing your job then I guess you're okay like like I remember reading an article about a guy who hired interns and stuff to do a lot of his work. But he was profiting because his salary was higher than he was paying. Well, they're people. talking about and he got this... in trouble for it. I'm like, why? He's brilliant. That's a very yeah, smart know, move. Super delegator. Especially if he's doing everything that the company. Well, this wants. is they were they, they were talking about. These are one of the factors that's alluding to this wage gap is partially because of this because you have people increasing their income household income wow. dramatically by being able to take on a second job. They're talking about and a lot of these jobs over here are you know 150 250 a year type of tech job that you can do remotely yeah. and because no one's required to come in office anymore you lie and you say you do another and you do another job and you got two of them that you're well, you're managing plus wow. the cost of living here is insane yeah. i mean you said 150 you gotta to do, you got to do around here that's for sure yeah people here 150 to 250 and they're like wow that's a lot of money nope it's not around here. Yeah. You make two fifty and you have a family. Yeah, but if you and your wife have four jobs <laughs> between the two of you, <laughs> I know, right? You know what I'm saying? At, at one fifty to two hundred each, now you're talking about eight hundred k a year. That's some good money. I don't care where you live. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you that's, know, so that's crazy. Yeah, isn't that Tesla, fascinating? I didn't, Google, I didn't even. You're gonna Apple. I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? That th- that would happen, and more power to you if you got the hustle to do that. And I didn't, didn't even dawn on me that that would be something that a lot of people are doing. But I, I guess it's actually becoming really popular. Well, wow. speaking of Tesla, I didn't. 
bring this up last time, but uh, you saw that they were, you know, talking about in 2022, they're going to launch this like Tesla bot. <sighs> It's like, like a one, robot. Of, one of the latest things. Like, yeah, this. a robot, dude. In like, like I guess it, it said something around 120 pounds was like going to be the amount of weight that it could lift, and They'll supposed to it. help you with like, you know, uh, manual labor type of things. And um, it's it's all powered by the AI, same AI that runs their cars. Uh, so it's just like, okay, so now we're gonna have robots. Here's the thing, like robots are cool. Like it's always a great at like to watch on movies and to like speculate about and all that. But we have no fucking need for robots. Mm. Like we just don't, we don't need robots. Maybe in the, the factory, of course, you know, to like, Oh, you don't do think those, so? I think we don't a- need in our daily lives. We don't need robots. Well, I mean, what personal daily lives? We don't I, need it. Yeah, we don't need it. But <laughs> people will want. That. Yeah, I mean, and think about all the jobs, like uh, a lot of manual labor jobs or repetitive jobs. You know, jobs where I mean, I worked a job when I was in high school, and there must have been I don't know, thirty of us or so, and we worked like kind of this assembly line job, and literally I had to do something like like one, and we had they had to rotate it so you didn't fall asleep because every hour yeah. or so you had you doing the same like. Grab this, move it to here, or zip this here. I mean, that was when he did the protein. Yeah, 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 yeah. mixing bags and jugs. Hey, did, you ever, and, did, you ever, did you ever take a little protein, just throw it? In your well, cup? we used to, yeah, we used to, you know, borrow uh, these <laughs> massive, you know, you know, big old five gallon things that we we'd take <laughs> home. My buddy's dad owned the company, so it, was yeah. like, it wasn't like we were really stealing. It was like you know, his dad was donating to his son's cause. But yeah, no, the, I mean, there's so many jobs like that. Uh, I mean, and even think of when they get uh, skilled enough to build a house. Well, forget jobs. You know, and now you could have uh, homes built for really, really yeah, cheap. Forget jobs. I, I think the whole like I have one in my home. Yeah, but it, they, it won't go there first. Me. It won't go yeah, there first. Of course not. Well, it won't, it's it's going to be a status thing, you know. Initially, yeah, and, of and even then, that is, that's maybe not even in our lifetime. Maybe you know that with having a real personal. You think in our lifetime is not going to happen? No, what I didn't say that. I said maybe not even in our lifetime. Oh, I think it'll be for a personal I, use at your. Oh, house. I think within the 20 years. I, I, I 100% no. think. I 100% no. think. Uh, I mean, who? Like the Elon Musk? Yes, no. of course. He'll have he'll have a pet no dog way, dude. robot. The, the, and he'll at the have rate a... that these things are moving forward. Everything is accelerating. Man. Oh, it's yeah. It's crazy. You, I could totally picture someone shopping at the mall, and they pick stuff out, and the robot grabs it for them and holds it and walks with them in the store. And, well, what about this one? What do you think? And it, it'll look good on you, Mrs. Whatever. Okay, cool. Let's yeah. buy this one, too. Oh, oh, you you, you two have been watching too much sci-fi stuff. That ain't happening anytime soon. Really? Definitely not in 20 Dude, years. all right. No. Let's start the ticker. No, yeah, start it. Mark, mark it I, down for me at what age we all gonna, are okay, right now. What's going to come Doug, first? Doug, you think you're going to yeah. have fucking robots like that around uh, shopping with you and shit? Well, uh, I don't know. Doug's old school. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I... I'm what, resistant we're to got all drones this. that can follow us. I, yeah. think, uh, I think you'll see that first. I think you're going to see this in tons of jobs and 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 in the workforce when did first. the se- when are the sex robots come into play and then well, that's that, already that's happening. first that yeah. is first yeah. that's it'll, where the innovation goes to go first <laughs> yeah it, it, it's true i wonder if elon considered that making these you know yeah. it's like somebody's gonna try and bang with oh us. let me look at this robot oh, well those are cool. i mean those and are they're already, not even good looking wait a minute what's, those are already there what's this attachment right here we call this yeah. the soft hand attachment what's it for uh yeah. for when it handles soft objects and stuff 120 <laughs> pounds of pressure is too much yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see it in that it, for personal use. It one hundred percent will be. It'll be used in the in the in the porn space yeah. first. I mean, it's already happening. That's already there. So that that is where it'll be. <laughs> for sure, first. there's going to be injuries and malfunctions and you know, oh crazy shit. That's just where I go. But I mean, yeah. you may, you bring up the good point of like, where do we really need this in our daily life? It's not going to having a robot hold your your shopping bags for you. It ha- it would have to be so feasible. Uh, for that come to- on dude you're totally listen look at all the stuff that that we get done for us now that 10 20 years ago you'd have been like yeah that's ridiculous you want your groceries delivered to your door it's that's right down b- the street bro you i know to, you said it sounds you gotta like- get in your car you gotta drive there cost gas bro, money you, know you gotta my- park the car you, that that that's a big inconvenience you know what my holding your fucking no. shopping bag because <laughs> that's the that's best what, example you've given that's so what far. you think look, look my grandfather used to say this you know he goes oh yeah when i was a kid and we started getting phones People laughed at it. It's like, you want to talk to somebody? Just go talk to them. And then texting. Why don't you just give them a call? Why would you text? Nobody calls anymore. Yeah. It's going to be like that, dude. You you're going to have Don't to, underestimate you're, the you're laziness. Gonna, I, okay, so I'm not I saying know. it's not going to happen. I agree with you guys. It's going to eventually happen. But the, 
it will have to be so cheap and affordable for everybody to justify it, 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 taking those inconveniences out. It's not as revolutionary as a cell phone. It's not as revolutionary as a computer, a car, or uh, Instacart being delivered. It's not even close to that. Oh, man. Unless you this, can give this, me a better example than holding your grocery bags. You, you know, know Alexis in, in Siri has kind of been priming us for this. You know, yeah. like it, it, it's like a something you can communicate to, but yep. now it's a, it's an object, you know, it's going to be like, there's going to be therapy. There's going to be all kinds of so, things. Okay, we'll I see Wash all... your dishes for you. Mow yeah. the lawn for me. Go buy this for me. Go pick like, this up a companion, for me. you know, for yeah. some people yeah. who are lonely. Yeah. Can you move the couch for me? Anything you can think of. Don't underestimate the laziness of humans. Well, the ability for, if it can wash your dishes uh, <laughs> and, clean, buy one just and clean your house. Uh, I, okay. But I mean, think of the, think of what that has to be the capable. Your tune just completely 180. Yeah. You hear, yeah. Like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It cleans the dishes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll, all right. I'm in. I'll buy that shit. Well, that's it. Hey, listen, I mean, there's people, cause here's what you have to look at. People are spent where people are spending money. You go grocery shopping, you put gas in your car already. Instacart yeah. gets it there faster. You don't have to spend any money. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Saves you time saves potentially even money depending on the distance of the grocery store. So super convenient, not a lot more money out of your pocket. I'm paying maybe two more dollars to have it like, you know, to my house or not say even $10, $10, whatever. If you are somebody who pays for a house cleaner uh, that you spend, you know, 500 bucks a month for a house cleaner on a regular basis, if you can get a robot for a thousand dollars a month or whatever like that, and it, they do that and other things. Okay, now we have a now we have a conversation. I'm willing to get in here and say, yeah. okay, I, Again, I concede. Though, don't underestimate how much money people are willing to spend on ridiculous things. Look at okay, look at entertainment. Right, you could very easily today, in comparison to what you could get 30 years ago or 20 years ago on TV, if you were to get the same amount of channels and the same amount of entertainment, you could spend. Three dollars a month and get all that stuff that you used to spend fifty dollars a month twenty years ago. Do people do that? No, they spend two hundred bucks a month because they want five million channels yeah. and all the entertainment they could. Well, possibly okay, so ask am for. I going to lose this bet when the fucking billionaires have one of these things in their house? I'm talking about us, normal people. Okay, walk around. I don't think. It, tell me I, how many people don't have a five hundred dollars cell phone in their pocket? No, I I'm think not, all the people that bought Teslas are, are bro. I mean, they're they're going to be next, bro. I literally saw this yesterday driving over here. There was a homeless dude who had a Venmo. He said cash or Venmo, no and way. he had a freaking <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> I swear dude, to God. That's great. And he had a cell phone. Like, come <laughs> on, dude. It's going to happen. I mean, it is going to happen. But it, it, where, the examples you guys are giving, we've made it to where a smartphone, you can get a smartphone for $100 now. Okay? So the robots will need to be at a price point that the average person can make that decision. And my argument is in 20 years, I don't see a robot capable to clean your house, okay. do your dishes for under $1,000, whatever is not, the price your point Your comments is. are not going to age well. I'll give you another example. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you another example. In uh, the first Walkman, I think was came out and hit the market in 1978 or 79. Do you know what the price was back then? Not adjusted for inflation. It was a couple hundred bucks. Three Over $350. Yeah. yeah. In the 80s, it didn't get that much cheaper. Super expensive. How many kids had Walkmans in the 80s, Doug? A lot. A lot. How yeah. much was a VCR when it first came out? Well, I'm familiar with Moore's Law. It was like $1,000. i am familiar bucks. with Moore's Law, and I know that this is speeding up. And it's no, only but what I a mean is it was 1000 That VCR was like 1000 bucks, not adjusted for inflation. Mm -hmm. So it was super expensive in the 80s to buy a VCR, yet everybody bought one because... They liked it. It's like, the latest and greatest. Don't underestimate, dude. No, you get a robot I, I, we, that does we, shit for we you. We have a, uh, you know, just a, two decades ago, the camera on your iPhone, it would be a $2,000 camera, but yeah. it's on your iPhone. Yeah, so, right. yeah, I, I'm not arguing any of the-, the I'm not the, even the, arguing the speed that the of price will go down. I just think there's so many other things, uh, you know, the, the whole argument of cars being gone and these, like, uh, you know, what's it called? The tube thing that you brought up yesterday, like- uh, Hyperloop. Hyperloop, Hyperloop yeah. and, and things like that, and us being able to travel to the moon. I just, I see a lot of that before I see- adding a robot companion in your house to do stupid chores. I just, I don't think before that's- Before going to the moon? Yeah, I do. You yeah. think people going to the moon before they have robots helping them in the house? I do. 
No mm-hmm. way, dude. Oh, really? No. No, that's a good that's a good timeline. Yeah. Let's, let's, people yeah. just going to the moon. Hey, yeah. why don't you have a robot? I'd be curious out. to see how that plays yeah. out. I like to fly to the moon every yeah. once in a while. Well, yeah. I mean, I think we're I you don't think so you think we're further along with having robot companions than totally. we are. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. What do you think, Doug? Come on. Comes out. No, I agree with uh, the Sal in this case. You think that we're gonna have these these per these Yeah, little- before we go to to the moon on a regular basis, of course. Yeah. Well, I okay, so yeah, I guess I should clarify. I don't think that like everybody will be traveling <laughs> I meant to the moon. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, there's going to be. I mean, we're we're really close to having people traveling to the moon, and we're not. I mean, we're not far from it. Became for the rich, it becoming a destination. Yeah, maybe spot. I don't think you, well, we'll all be on the moon, and it'll become like staying at Motel Six, working on you know yeah. where everybody can afford to do it. It'll yeah, be it'll maybe. Be, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be really weird, is what I think. It's going to be very, very. It's already getting weird. There's blood and skateboards. That okay, we so to the blood and the skateboard <laughs> thing. <laughs> this is another thing. Andrew actually sent me this video. There was a uh, uh, on one of those like news channels in Australia, and there's like, all kinds of craziness oh, going on in Australia right now. Um, uh, this newscaster is doing, you know, so this report, and then all of a sudden, like it, it cuts, and and there's this weird satanic ritual happening uh that they're they're showing on live tv like it like the producer must have like accidentally just chopped and 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 placed that right on the huh? live stream yeah just randomly just, just comes randomly up. yeah i saw this hilarious and it was just like satanic ritual like, okay so literally like a pentagram somebody up there like so it's like, like so it was a live stream so he's like all right we're gonna cut to the to the supermarket that we're in it's boom it's the freaking satanic ritual and everybody's watching. And they're like, "What the hell is going on, dude? That's yeah. weird. That's either a big mistake or it's on purpose. That has to be on purpose, right? Like, uh, how do you mistakenly yeah. stream, you stream to something like that? It, I mean, you have to have that already, like totally, uh, you know. And so it's it, it just begs the to, to question, like, what's the the purpose of that? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, dude. You guys, it's all you guys, kinds of weirdness. You guys are getting me with my conspiracy cackles. Now. You get me to start thinking I, like this. Too, not, so. hey, not even a conspiracy. That's just what happens. So make yeah. sense of it. Hey, speaking of which, don't take this the wrong way. But did you stop using Caldera? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, oh, hey, snap. I, I actually just Bad started filters, my routine today. back up just a couple of days. I during the whole COVID thing, I yeah. wasn't worried about my beautiful face, and I did notice a fucking huge difference. Totally, dude. I did. So I, I am back though. I did, I started it back up yesterday, the day before, um, but I took like a solid two weeks off of my like kind of my routine. You know what like, it goes nice on too? Beards. Yeah, no, I love it. Put it all over your beard. Uh, I I love it. I've noticed that too. So again, for me, what trips me out is that I have oily skin. I'm putting oil on my face. Never in a million years would I do that. It balances out my oily skin. And you know, I don't know if like I've just gotten so used to it that I, that I, because I feel like I would have never noticed something like this years ago. Um, and now that I had this little break where I didn't do it for a couple weeks, I really noticed a big difference. I was like, mm. oh shit, dude. <laughs> speaking, oh, speaking of sponsors, I wanted to ask you this cause I know you're still feeling some little bit of stiffness and fatigue and stuff. Have you tried adjusting your chili pad at night? Have you tried seeing if being to warmer? No, colder. Oh, I'm at the coldest you can get. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I put the because scr- I know that the that, that that can help with inflammation. So I was wondering if maybe going colder. But you're already on the max. Yeah, I already. So I turn mine on. So I have mine set to kick on at seven thirty or eight eight seven thirty or eight, which is a couple hours before I get into bed. Mm. Uh, at the coldest level. So when I hit those sheets, it's like it, mine's so cold that I actually I. I'm on Katrina's side first for a little bit. Ease and I, yourself in. And I ease, I do. I literally do. Well, like that's I, why I can't do that, that early. Like I have to do it like a half an hour or something before bed because then that way it sort of like, like goes down in temperature like yeah. with me. But yeah, like getting in bed to a cold yeah. bed is, is a little. Oh, it's free. So it's, it's kind of funny because uh, she loves it because she wants to cuddle anyways. So when I slide in, my side is so cold. Even me, it's like, oh God, that's a little too cold at first. I'll cuddle up with her. And then I'm like, one leg is over there, then another leg, and then an arm. And then I pull away and then I'm on my Next side. Thing you know, you're yeah, right. yeah. So that's kind of that, now, the, <laughs> the, what the does, routine does, looks like. Your wife also likes it a lot warmer, right? Yeah, she does. This is definitely a male-female thing. Last night I'm in bed and I'm in my underwear, nothing else, sheets off me, and I'm like, oh. More descriptions, please. And Yeah. and so, <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yeah, please. I'm some saying I'm laying on my side. No, I'm okay. laying there and Jessica is bundled. She has... Uh, p- pajamas on and her robe. Yeah, it's good. So she's robe, pajamas, 
covers, <laughs> and I'm almost just naked. Burritoed up, and I'm yeah. almost naked on the other side. Like such a difference oh, in huge. terms That's of how it is temperature. Oh, yeah, Katrina has it Same. all the way up, as almost as warm. It goes a little bit warmer. She doesn't go the highest, but I think she has it at like. 85, you know, right? Yes, mm -hmm. it's like 85. Oh, wow. 85 on her side. I'm at like, what, 55, I think is the lowest on my side. So wow. I have the lowest, right? And she goes, she climbs into bed in like pants, socks, and a, and a, like a long sleeve. It blows my mind. What is, you know, although I will say this, uh, one of the number one people or types of people that have actually DM me about chili being like a life changer for them is a women then going through menopause. Oh yeah, so that makes sense. being menopausal and your your core temperature heats up like crazy. Oh, so right. actually, a lot of people that have told me like, "Oh my God, chili has been the most amazing" because it actually manages. It doesn't just hold. It actually manages a temperature. So yeah. as you heat up or cool down, it adjusts how much cooler it has to get. Yeah. Or how so much if you want it to, to stay at seventy, it'll stay at seventy whether right. your body heats up. That's right. Cools down. Mm -hmm. It works yeah. just like a thermostat inside. Do your you house. guys? Do you guys also need to sleep with a fan on? Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. I just like moving air. So mm -hmm. I have windows open and moving air. I just do that stale air. And yeah, you know why? Because I've been, <laughs> we just had such a small room and then both dogs are in there with us as well. Just, oh. <gasps> you know, with their breath, <laughs> just destroying my air. So I'm just, I want it moving. Uh, well, no. uh, what I like about the chili is it actually has a, a white noise thing built into it. Yeah. So like if I had, like if Mozzie's breathing or top breathing, snoring loud and stuff, you can turn it on. It has three modes. It has like a silent mode, and then it has, I don't know what they call the middle mode, and then it has like the white noise mode. Yeah. You turn it all the way up, and it has that humming of a fan sound that, I mean, that puts me out. You know, I want to ask you, Justin, I know you live, you've live you lived in the woods areas for a while. Yeah. Uh, do you get like big ass spiders in your house and shit? Oh, yeah. It's, dude, it's funny you bring that up because we, um, you know, we're getting ready to move, and so our spider guy hasn't come by in a bit, and literally every night we've had the biggest oh, of oh big redwood spiders down stairs and i feel so bad because it's it's always like in my kids bedroom or in their shower and they're just like getting ready for bed oh <laughs> dad you know i'm like and so sometimes i'll make them you know kind of kill it themselves because i'm like dude this is like you know like be a man right <laughs> like like you guys got to handle this like if i'm not here you know like who's gonna step up and kill the sucker you know and so but you know sometimes i'm like okay and then they're like no dad this one is huge and i'm like oh it's probably not even that big and then i just walk in like oh yeah. oh shit it's yeah. like it's big as my palm of my hand uh, jessica's not gonna want to hear this then because so we where we moved we're up against the oh. foothills uh in california like literally our backyard oh, now you'll get some tarantulas out there well stop i'm just saying now <laughs> You ruined, you ruined everything. It's October, by the way, that's when that Stop happens. Stop it. Don't that's worry. It. They're they're just, you know, they're just passing through. No, this. listen. I'm already hearing it from her. This morning, freaks out. My daughter saved her life. This is what she, literally her words. Uh, your daughter is a lifesaver. I'm like, what? She's like, there was a spider. And they're not big like the ones you're talking about. No. But Jessica has a death lead. She does not like, I'm not a big spider fan either, but she really hates them. So she's like, I've already seen two. I don't know. We might have to move. I'm like, babe. <laughs> We just moved in. You just got to get a good spider guy. I'm like, we live, we do. We hired somebody. Yeah, so see, you're fine. Hopefully, they'll take care of the whole you thing. You know what's weird to me? I, because uh, I don't like, I cannot stand bugs either, and I'm the same. I'm, we're all similar here. Uh, but I, like the spiders you're talking about, Justin, those trip me out and freak me out more than a tarantula does. Yeah. A big tarantula almost like because they can get in little places. Yeah, and yeah. he's like an animal. I mean, yeah. he's so big that you like you see him. What the, and, okay, hold on a second. Exactly. Is that I'm, I'm with you? I know that. there's not no. a lot of logic behind that. No, no, no. Here's my question. No, because <laughs> they're not hiding or like you know you, you, they're not trying to like creep in. Yeah, you like see places them coming. You know they're still in your house. And you can't get rid hold of them. It's on like, a second. No, you move along. I've never seen a tarantula in in, in my house, but if you find one. What do you do? You can't kill it. Yeah, you pick it up. You get a broom, you, dude. you pick it up. Yeah. With your Shoot. hand? Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. You picked it up with your hand. Yeah. We, we say when I grew up in, in Don Pedro, it was- With your bare hand, you picked up a tarantula. Yeah. We used to let them crawl on us. Yeah. I am not freaked out by a tarantula, but a, a like a redwood spider, a blackwood, those yeah. freak me they'll, out. They'll bite you in your sleep. And it's, I think it's what second. Justin's saying. It's that if you don't get it- it yeah. goes, and then you yeah. can't find it. You're not, and then you think about you it before you go to house, sleep. Bro. You're like, dude, it's still here. You have a tarantula in your house. You know it's where it's at at all times. It's that big. 
Mm-hmm. There's, yeah. It's not like it's getting away and you're not going to be able to find yeah, it. Like, like, what the yeah. fuck? Yes. Hold on a second. It's you, like a piece of furniture. You picked that shit up with your hands too, like he did? Yeah, dude. No. And they yeah, move was, slower too. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. Ain't if bad. I, They're ev- kind of cool. If I ever see a translator, you guys coming over and picking it up and taking it out. Yeah, I'm mean, not touching that motherfucker. Right, I'd be fine. more, like I said, I'm more afraid of the <laughs> the dude. redwood spiders or what happens? I'm a spider killing machine. I've had so much practice, you guys. What if you spray it with hairspray? Will it freeze in place? I don't know. I've never sprayed one with I, I got to figure out a no touch way to do no, it if you, I catch something like you that. Know, I mean, you, you can get it all angry and aggressive, aggressive, dude. You can take it's like gonna, a broom and like shoo a tarantula out. It's going to oh. hiss at you. <laughs> you could get a, You could literally take a broom and like shoo a tarantula out. One of those redwood spiders, they'll jam and go hide and then you don't know where they're at. Okay, so here's I had just, one jump on me. So dude, I need, a, that. Huge, that I need sucks. a huge that, favor. If you guys want to like take a tremendous amount of stress off of me and you want to make sure I show up to do podcasts and stuff. Doug, when you send this episode to Jessica, can you edit that part out? Because if she thinks, <laughs> if she thinks we're gonna have a tarantula in the house, we're, we're it's not going closed. in the house. Yeah, he's listen, it'll house. be in your backyard and it'll yeah. move on. You're not in the house, dude. I did. He said we, in the house. we had the door them everywhere open. up in Don People. They were so bad that in October, that's when they that's when they come out. Uh, the, you would we you run over one every day on the road. That's how crazy amounts they were everywhere all the time. So it's really really common up there where we live. <laughs> yeah, so and every and once in a while they get in your pool. They get in you your. You got to think about what they do too, dude. They kill rodents and they kill all kinds of vermin. You know that are worse because yeah. they're the ones bringing all the. Gross, you know, bacteria oh. and, and viruses fuck and nonsense. That, yeah, yeah. no, yeah, yeah. Fuck, I'd rather have a rodent than a freaking tarantula no, that, in dude. my house. Yeah. No, I'm shooting Hell those no. outside of the beach. Yeah. You guys ever seen those uh, those pictures of those spiders in uh, like the the desert? Australia, no, or like the no, Australia those, ones. Those, those, what are they wolf, called? Those wolf spiders are uh, crazy. Or the camp, like there's one that's called like, like it hangs on the, the bottom camel of camel spider. Oh, yeah. The last time we had this discussion, those tunnel spiders that come up. And like, <laughs> the yeah. last time we had this discussion where we got into this whole how freaked out we're all of spiders i had so many dms of people sending me stuff from australia yeah and uh, there was i don't know if you guys remember this but there was someone sent me a picture of this wolf spider like carrying a rat (laughs) like going up the wall (laughs) holding a rat dude a fucking spider that's crazy crazy. and they have them everywhere over there you don't even know what's Uh, happening uh, in my spine right now there's all kinds of chills uh, going up and down my spine i'm terrified and they don't have guns there. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the show. Let me tell you about a company that makes food for your babies that's really healthy. Baby food is notoriously unhealthy. It's full of sugar, preservatives, grains. Uh, a lot of parents don't want to give their kids grains. Not high in protein, doesn't have grass-fed meats, and it's not organic and all that stuff. Serenity Kids is different, right? So they have snacks that are grain-free. They have grass-fed meats. Uh, bone broth in their products, vegetables, a little bit of fruit, some natural starches, no preservatives. This is the healthiest baby food that we found anywhere. In fact, this is the only packaged baby food that I give to my nine-month-old son. Adam also feeds his son this food. It's so good, by the way, that Mind Pump actually invested in the company. So great products, tastes good. Go check it out if you want healthy kids. Head over to MySerenityKids.com and then use the code MP20 to get 20% off your first order. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. Our first caller is MJ from California. Hey, MJ, how can we help you? Oh, that's my son's initial. Hi, guys. Um, I, I have a question regarding my new fitness goals. I started training maybe two years ago, doing mostly high intense interval training. And about a year ago, my husband started joining me, uh, which was great because he had high cholesterol and his uh, physician wanted to put him under Libitor, but just through diet and exercise, his uh, cholesterol level went down and he's super doing great right now. But I also start incorporating strength training into my schedule and basically long story short, I've gone through 120 pounds to now 135 pounds. And I still want to get more (laughs) goals in terms of muscle mass. Um, I am eating around 2,500 calories a day right now. And um, I went from 1,350 to 2,500. And basically, I just, I'm a little disoriented on how I can incorporate my training with my husband with my strength goals i used to train four times a day upper body lower body split right after i trained with him and that kind of burned me out so i stopped doing that for the month of august and i was just doing 
dumbbell training with him, but I miss the barbell. Okay, so your goal, so wonder, your goal is sorry, to build more strength, ahead. MJ? Sorry, say that again? I'm sorry, your, your goal is to build more strength and muscle? Um, yes, actually, yes, yeah. I, but before, I wanted to build more muscle because I like the, the physique of stronger legs. I mean, my physique is wrong. I don't have much shape, uh, but I now I just miss the lifting heavy, like deadlifts and, uh, you know, squats and things like that. Okay. So, so you're, so, so to summarize your question is uh, you want to gain more strength, maybe a little bit more muscle and want some advice on your workout routine. Is that correct? Right. And I've been doing this for a while. It's not that I get super tired. I, I can uh, do strength training after, uh, with my husband and I know you guys say basically what you can doesn't mean you should do it. Just working out makes me really happy. It's therapeutic for me. I, I meditate. I, I think of ideas. I'm a researcher. So we work out, I think of experiments to do and it it's, aligns very well with my, my lifestyle. Well, before, before we give a recommendation, I think the, the first thing is to commend what you've already accomplished. The fact that you went from 1300 to 2,500 calories and you're, you're maintaining, it sounds like a pretty good weight and physique is phenomenal. So you're, you're doing a hell of a job. My question is, are you, you sound, you're doing hit, hit training three to four days a week. And also wait, like how many days are you actually lifting uh, per week? Well, right now, um, let me think, uh, just with dumbbells, um, like all together, Three. everything you're doing. I want. How many days a week are you tra weight training and e like exercising? What's that look like? Five. Five days a week, and of the five days, are all of them with weights, or is that some cardio days? Or are you doing five days of weight training? Yes. So uh, I do one uh, hit day, which is just thirty minutes. Hmm. Okay, and then the rest is mixed. What? Okay. The rest, and, yeah. And your hit training is thirty minutes long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a little long uh, for HIT training. Typically, okay. so you want to do maybe 15 minutes of HIT training. That kind of maximizes its effects. After that, it starts to become more cardio, like steady state cardio, even though you may have the the form and the programming that looks like HIT training. Just as you stretch it out, it starts to become more endurance uh, focused. Here's the other thing. You said you, you it's therapeutic for you to exercise. You love the way it feels. Um, but you also, you know, maybe want to do less to build more muscle. This reminds me of the statement, you know, I, I want my cake and I want to also eat it, right? Which, you know, what, yeah. that, what that means is you want to have your cake in front of you, but you want to eat it. When you eat it, it's gone. So how can I have both? You can't. You can't necessarily have both. And that's okay. You know, pick the one that works better for you. One thing you can try is you could try to reduce the time that you do HIIT training. So maybe don't cut it out, but cut it down to about 15 minutes and then observe how your body responds. It, my guess would be that just cutting the, the hit down to 15 minutes will do a couple things. One, the hit training will probably automatically and naturally become a little more intense because it's shorter. And two, you'll probably notice more strength gains uh, from, from doing so because now the body is you know going to prioritize strength a little bit over endurance because you've re reduced that time. I'll be even more specific. I mean, I would love to see you run MAPS Anabolic three days. So if you like the five days a week, that's therapeutic. I don't want to change that, right? So I don't want to tell you stop going to the gym or stop working out five days a week. So let's continue. Yeah, I work out at home. Okay, so let's continue working out five days a week. But the way I would prefer it to look is three days a week of MAPS Anabolic, one day of your 15 to 20 minute hit training because you like it, and then maybe a mobility day. That would be a, a, a perfect because I love I love where your calories are at. I think your your calories, your macro pro. I mean, you eating twenty five hundred plus calories. I see your breakdown on carbs, fat, and protein. That looks really good. So you're doing a hell of a job right now. I think if you just want to build and 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 sculpt and shape the body more, I would reduce the uh, in intensity as far as the hit training in there. I'd put more emphasis on full body strength training. Get back to those deadlift squats and more of a maps anabolic routine. And that would be your core. So that would be your three days a week foundational training. And then I'd let you do a, a day of like mobility type of training, flow session. And then on the, on the other day, you can do your HIIT training. Now I'm, I'm confused. Um, and you brought up your husband in terms of being like the accountability. Yeah. Okay. So have you guys actually ran a program together? Or is this something you've just been trying to no. kind of help him with? I, I basically done my own research um, and 
change my composition and body composition. And then he saw that and he wanted to, you know, tag along with me. So we just do whatever I come up with, but obviously I don't have the experience as you guys do. I'm, this is just out of, you know, hobby. And, um, I feel like we reached like a plateau and then we mm -hmm. want to have further and further strength. And also if I don't wake up in the morning and wake him up and, you know, get our work done before the kids wake up, I, I know he's not going to do it. So yeah. I want him to keep on doing it. Well, I think it's, it, it this is a clear way to help in terms of like having an, a, a plan of action um, that he can also kind of look through himself. I know that was something that really helped uh, me and my wife was to finally at least like, both look at a program that we could, uh, you know, both do together. And that was something that like, it, it, it takes a lot of pressure off of you in terms of having to drum that up every single time. Uh, and so, yeah, like, uh, to, to Adam's like suggestion, like maps in a bog, I think would be a great one for you both to kind of look at. Yeah. You know, you know, MJ, I, I really appreciate as a trainer, I really appreciated, training uh, clients that were, you know, research minded or research focused. I have trained researchers in the past and I like it because uh, obviously you, you've been trained to be more objective than I guess the average person, which is excellent when it comes to fitness because it's so hard sometimes to be objective when you mix in your own personal aesthetic goals and insecurities. And, you know, we all have body image issues to one extent or another. And so, it can be very hard to be objective with just yourself, but because you're research minded, you know, you're more trained to look at the data here is, this is a great example. And one of the best ways you can learn in fitness, uh, kind of through that lens is to follow a template that is tried and true. Okay. And, and here's what you'll get from it. I'm not asking you to follow maps anabolic blindly, although that would be perfectly fine from my perspective. I know it'll do great for you. Follow the program and then pay attention. Pay attention to how you feel. Pay attention to the different phases, the organization of the exercises, why you're doing particular number of sets and reps, how your body's feeling, how your husband is reacting, responding. And what'll happen through this process is it'll accelerate your knowledge of how to program for yourself much faster than if you didn't necessarily follow a tried and true template. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And okay. actually what I like is that I feel like my, I'm my own experiment. So sometimes I switch my macros and then I see my body reacting differently. And that was also my other question. Should I keep my macros the same or should I go higher or lower? She's got a good, she's yeah. got a good breakdown. Yeah. Right your now. breakdown looks excellent. I mean, maybe add a little bit, you go up 150 calories or something, just cause you're, you're going to be now trying to focus a little more on strength. That'll help you, but Need, we're going to, we're going to send you maps anabolic. And I also want to send you maps prime to help you with mobility and priming sessions i think also just from talking to you i think you're going to get a lot of value maps prime is extremely valuable to people who really want to understand how the body moves how muscles connect you know proper mobility which is extremely valuable like you learn that and everything else is a lot easier when you learn that that part of it. I would I would actually let uh, let your body tell you what to do with the cal. I think you're in a very healthy, good place, calorie and macro place. But if you switch over to Maps Anabolic, what we might see because one of the most common things that we hear from feedback from Maps Anabolic is, oh my God, my yeah. appetite increase. Yeah, so you might actually feel that if you do feed. So if you feel if you feel satisfied and you feel good where your calories are, I I like where you're at. So there's nothing wrong with that. So I would start there. But if you notice as you start going through MAPS Anabolic, your appetite starts ramping up, feed the body. Just make good choices. Eat eat how you're eating. Just more. Just add a few hundred more calories uh, to that uh, with the same balance that you have going on right now. So let your body tell you what it needs to do from there. Uh, there's a good chance when you start running MAPS Anabolic that you, your appetite might increase a little bit and don't be afraid to go ahead and feed it a little bit more. Yeah, that's a very good sign. So we'll send those two programs over to you, MJ. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for calling. Yeah, it's a you know, common question, right? Took a minute to unpack that one. It did. It's a, it's a common question. You know, I'm doing this, but I also want to get this and I'm doing that. And yeah. there's no, I mean, unless you're training inappropriately, um, there isn't necessarily a wrong answer. Um, so, I, and I know a lot of people are in this kind of conundrum. And we, how, how many times have we gotten the question, I want to get, you know, faster at running, but I also want to get a higher but max I get deadlift. bigger. Yeah. yeah so it's <laughs> like, okay, you know, you can get a little of both, but you can't get a lot of either. 
And that's that's totally fine. In fact, you know, you know what I used to tell clients who did this, who were really into this this like dichotomy of like goals, is I would say, all right, for three months, let's focus on one, and right. then the next three months, focus right. on the other. And it's a lot of fun doing that. It's actually one of my favorite ways to train myself and to train. Well, clients. the only reason why I'm I would even suggest switching or changing something up is that she's she's said that she's had a plateau and she still wants to change her mm -hmm. body. Yeah. I mean, the other part, uh, I mean, she's having great results with her husband. She's having great results with herself. She's in a, and she went from 1300 to 2,500 calories. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's like, great. that's, that's phenomenal. And she's happy. Like if that was just it, I would say, Hey, stay the course. Things are going great for you. Maybe switch up your routine a little bit or whatever to, to try to break through the plateau. But because she's trying to change her physique, right. She's trying to sculpt a little bit different. Like, I mean, that's the only reason why I think there's a, a purpose to like really switch her from the way she's training to like a more of a MAPS anabolic type of phase. Otherwise, it sounds like she's doing phenomenal. All right. Our next caller is Nicole from California. Hey, Nicole, how can we help you? Hey, guys, how's it going? Good. So I will try to sum up um, my whole uh, story here in less than two minutes, not take up too much time. So um, when I was about six months old, I was diagnosed with spinal meningitis. Um, what had actually happened was I was in Stanford Hospital for about three or four months. Um, and what had happened was the disease actually affected part of my quadricep muscle in my left leg. Um, they don't really know at this point, this was back in 1982, if it was the high fever that I hit at 105 or if it was the actual meningitis. So in a nutshell, um, after about four months uh, back and forth on what to do, they decided to go in through my hip and actually remove a portion of my left quad, the muscle in there. So in turn, I was in a body cast for about seven to eight months after that. Then when I got out of the body cast at about 18 months old, um, my leg, well, so sorry to back up. I forgot to start. What, what had happened was, they had to go in through my hip and release, release the quad muscle, um, out. So they had to do surgery there. Um, when I was like eight months old, then put me in the body cast. And then, um, I was in that for a while, came out of the body cast. Um, they had to do physical therapy to kind of get my leg to function correctly, um, get it to work and move. So essentially I didn't really start walking until I was close to three years old. Um, so, I've been in physical therapy for till almost about eight or nine years old, twice a week, um, back and forth from Stanford. At this time, um, I grew up in Fremont, so it wasn't a huge deal. Um, so we'd go to Stanford two to three times a week, physical therapy, just to kind of get my leg to function properly. Um, what essentially ended up happening was my left leg is now shorter than my right leg, as well as my left foot is a size and a half smaller than my right foot. So on my right, I wear an eight. On my left, I wear a six and a half. So all growing up, um, I was in therapy. I went through multiple surgeries. My last one being when I was 12, uh, 12 years old in sixth grade. Um, I wore the orthopedic suit shoe with the lift to try to balance out my back. Obviously, being 12 years old, my mom gave up the battle. It's very embarrassing as a 12-year-old girl. So she finally said, you know what, screw it. So... Um, I walked with a limp my whole entire life, um, with my left leg being very weaker than my right leg. Um, my right leg has had to do the majority of the work my entire life. Um, from walking upstairs to right, I still can't ride a bike standing up. I can't hop on my left foot, um, of, with one leg. There's just certain things. So I guess essentially what my question is, um, is, I pretty much can function and do everything. Like, you know, I grew up playing softball, snowboarding, skiing, you know, all the basic sports. Um, but there's just one thing that I just can't develop is my legs. So I've worked out since, you know, I've been about 20 and I'm 39 now. And I've always skipped leg day per se, because it's embarrassing and I can't do it. And um, so I've always done spin class or I've hiked a lot. Um, but it just doesn't develop my legs like I want it to. And I think that my upper body is really um, suffering from it because it's like overworked per se, because I always do upper body. Whereas I think if I develop my lower body, then um, I think that it would essentially help my overall appearance and, you know, kind of give me a little bit more, you know, built in in tone. So <laughs> that's, that's my question. <laughs> 
Okay. I'll let you guys take it from there. I'm hoping that you guys can point me in a good direction or some some ideas to help me out. Yeah. With what well, to do? What a lateral training, man. What a story. Yeah. I mean, you're first off, you're probably a badass uh, uh, now. I would imagine going through all of that as a kid. Uh, now as an adult, um, you're probably a badass. Am I right? Pretty you can be resilient. honest. Uh, well, I mean, luckily I went through it in the eighties and it's, and I grew up like, and I, you know, I got teased a lot by my limbs, but thank God it's not right now. Or I'd probably be in a world of fur with social media and stuff. So it was a lot easier, I think, to go through it back then. Um, you know, my parents never, they never, uh, they never made it a deal. It was never really talked about. It mm -hmm. was like, no, you get on your bike and you go, no, you play softball. It was That's it. Mm -hmm. So I never really grew up with that. Like kind of, it was, it was just, it just wasn't a big deal, but yeah you know, you still have it in the back of your mind. So no, that's, that's uh, yeah, what a story. And, um, and yeah, I guess, right. You, you are a badass. Okay. So here's the deal with the training with the lower body. I would avoid all exercises that involve both legs at the same time. Your training should be entirely unilateral. Every single lower body exercise, yeah. single leg, leg press, single leg, leg extensions, like single, everything, single. everything one leg at a time, you know, uh, and start with the, the, the weaker, less dominant side. And that's we'll it. And, and here's how I would start, Nicole. This is what I would do. Okay. I would do about 15 to 20 minutes every single day of unilateral training for your legs and keep the intensity moderate. I wouldn't go super high intensity. Keep it moderate. Do it every single day for about 15 to 20 minutes. When you start to feel like, whoa, I'm starting to get strong and I'm starting to get good at this, then I would reduce the frequency down to about four days a week, but I would increase the time that you're focused on the workout. So now you're going from 15 to 20 minutes to 30 to 40 minutes. And when you get really strong doing that, then you go down to three days a week and now you can do a full you know, 30, 45 minute harder unilateral workout, but that should be your entire leg workout. You should do no exercises with both legs mm -hmm. on the floor together. You're already doing the cycling. You're doing the hiking. You know how to move with both legs. You have been for your whole life. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want you to strengthen that necessarily. I want you to complement uh, everything else you're doing with the unilateral stuff. That'll make a huge difference um, in what you're talking about in building muscle and building okay. strength. And it won't strengthen some of the imbalances that you might uh, have already developed. Are you, are you training in a gym or at home? Um, no, I actually have a PRX rack at home. Um, when the pandemic hit and I was home with an eight year old and a five year old, um, I basically built, um, a whole gym. I have a PRX rack. I have a sled. Um, I have like ropes. So I do a lot of, um, I like I do a lot of sled work. Um, I know Sal, you talked about, like, I do like a lot of sidewalking, like with the pulling of the sled, um, that I really like. Um, so I have a whole gym at home and, you know, and one of my biggest things is I always just wanted to be able to squat. But the problem when I do that is when I squat, I tend to go to the right yeah, and my whole yeah, body goes yeah, yeah. to no that is, right leg. Yeah. I would, and I would love to see you get, uh, I would, I would love to see you get a suspension trainer. Use the, I have one. Okay, great. So you use a suspension trainer and actually do like pistol squats. And I, I'm sure right now that those are, they're, are they challenging? How do you, can you do them? No. So I do. So with the TRX, I do what I do is I'll hold them. And, um, so lunges are kind of difficult. Like already, obviously I try to do Bulgarian split squats and I can do them on one side perfectly fine. But then the other side, obviously I'm overcompensating. My back is coming into play. My, even my neck is coming yeah. to play because everything is overcompensating for that leg. So I'll use the TRX to hold, you know, to hold myself in place. But then essentially what happens is I'm getting an upper body workout now so, because okay. now I'm holding myself so stiff, but I will use it to do squats to try to even out, um, so, you know, to try to get lower, but you know, it's, it's still, it still goes to the right. It's, so, you know, so, it's just inevitable. <laughs> so, so don't squat, not with both feet on okay. the ground. Uh, I wouldn't even do Bulgarians. I would try and do either pistols or use a bench. Okay, so you're and you, and you could use so th imagine the bench. You're sitting down on the bench. You have the suspension trainer also, and use the suspension trainer to help you get up out of that position with one leg. With one leg. With and, one leg. Okay. And start with the the less the, the weaker one, and you might even have to do this at first, which is totally okay. Putting a pad underneath there, so it's a very because we don't want to. What you don't want to do is cheat the rep. Okay, so I don't. I, I care more about you getting up and keeping your hips and your chest and shoulders square. And so, what you might have to start at, which is totally fine, 
is a, a bench even with a cushion or something. So it's a very short range of motion. Get strong in that range of motion, then get rid of the pad and get and the the dominant leg, the strong one, needs to mirror what you can do perfectly with the weaker one. So let it dictate the training. Otherwise, you're always going to have that that dominant side wanting to compensate when you eventually do bilateral stuff. But for now, everything is single leg. You start with it. If you find yourself, like what you mentioned, like Bulgarian split squat and you cheating, that's because that's a really deep lunge and that's challenging and you're, you're not ready for that yet. I don't need you there yet. I'd rather you do a very shortened range of motion up with perfect form mm -hmm. until we can get a little bit more depth. And so that is the goal, the way it should. And, and honestly, like Sal's recommendation of like every day, that's I just that one exercise. That one exercise, I'm gonna get you really good mm -hmm. at getting up off the bench with perfect form on our weaker side. And if that means I gotta start with a big old cushion underneath you at first, that's fine. We we get good in that range of motion, then we then you get to a place where you have perfect form there, then we drop the cushion. And wherever you're at with the weak side, you mirror that with the dominant side. Now, if you have to okay. that, that squat rack, uh, I would also recommend like a step up with your weaker side. Yes. And so you, you, you know, you can brace uh, alongside the post. Uh, I know it's a little bit, uh, short. you know, in, instable sometimes. Yeah. Or sh real short. Yeah. You don't have to go that high. And like, that's where you start. Um, but you know, secure yourself. So you're in good posture, good upright posture, uh, start with your weaker side and, and really kind of dictate it, uh, around, you know, how many reps you can do with that side. And then just, you know, frequency is everything. So yeah. just, just, just let that leg guide, uh, you know, the amount of volume that you're going to bring into the workouts. Yeah, And Nicole, what this means is for a long time, your right leg is going to get an easy workout. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that means that because the left leg is dictating, for a while, you're going to get a left leg workout, and the right leg is going to just feel like it's going through the motions. That's right. And that's 100% what we want. What we don't want is you to have a hard workout in both legs because then all you're doing is you're you're just continuing to you know strengthen that imbalance between the left leg. So you got between the legs. So you got to keep it harder on the on the. That's why the the weaker leg needs to dictate. It literally means the stronger leg is going to get an easy workout for a while. And then the second thing is your all muscles are stronger on the negative portion of a rep than they are on the positive. In other words, I can lower way more weight under control in a squat than I can lift, right? So when you're doing these exercises, the hard part will be the lift, right? But then when you go down, try to do it slow and control. That's yeah. where, that's the big focus. So that's where stability comes. When you're doing that step up that Adam was talking about where you're, or that stand up exercise, it's going to be hard to get up and you're whole, using your arms. You're like, oh man, this is real tough. But now it's time to sit down. Go down as slow as you possibly can and see if you can do it without using your hands. And you might plop down at first, but keep practicing. And you'll notice that the negative will get better way faster than the positive does. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And I care I care about your form more than I care about the depth on the bench right now. So even though we talk, you hear us talk all the time about the benefits of range of motion and that's so important, what I don't want you to do is either the step up or the get up, so the two exercises that Justin and I are talking about, just because you can, you're strong enough to step up on a, say, a three foot bench. If you got to turn your body and tweak it to the side and kind of cheat it up to get up every time, doesn't count. I don't yeah. want you to do that. No. I would rather you. I would rather get you a start on point. a fucking yeah. six inch step. You know what I'm saying? Like I want, I want to, I want to see a six inch step perfect. I mean, and like Sal was saying, real slow on the way down, stand up perfect. And, and it be perfect form, and then we just slowly increase the range of yeah. motion until you can do something pretty deep with perfect range, now, uh, perfect control. Now, Nicole, because we're talking about uh, a, a large imbalance due to some you know actual structural issues, a shorter leg, smaller foot, and, and, and years of, especially as a kid, walking a particular way, this means we can't neglect any muscles on that left side. So that also means... Do not neglect single leg calf raises. Do not neglect. Here's an exercise we almost never talk about on the podcast. It's not a big deal, but this is one I would always recommend to runners with shin splints and stuff. And in your case, I definitely would recommend. Uh, you want to do tibialis raises. So a tibialis raise is I literally stand on a really low, like maybe like a five pound plate on my heel and I lift my toes. So I'm working the muscle on my shin. This also means I'm going to strengthen abduction where I bring my leg out 
adduction where I bring my legs together. Don't neglect any muscles on this left side. So do exercises kind of for everything. Of course, make the focus the the big compound movement, the one that mimics you know what you're going to need in real life. But no, don't neglect anything, and don't be surprised at how quickly your body responds. But frequency is your friend here. 15 to 20 minutes every single day, and I'd like you to throw in a mobility component here. Ninety nineties. I would love to see her prime. Yeah, before she does this. Yeah. So do. So you- I do. Um, I do right now. I mean, obviously, it's not what you got your mobility, but I have done yoga for almost fifteen years. I do it about three times a week. Um, it's just something that has really increased. Um, you, you know, my strength in that leg. So I do do that. But yeah, I mean, some sort of more central like mobility. Okay. Well, here's the deal with, with, with yoga and you've been doing it a long time. Uh, I would place special emphasis on the, uh, the, the single leg balancing movements. Okay. Okay. So just like because <laughs> like, like, like literally that's the focus. So just because you're in a split stance, you know, like if you're like warrior, I think one or two, we tend to think, oh, this is unilateral because one leg is in the front. Not, It's not really unilateral because the back leg is still engaged. This is why the Bulgarian split stance squats to you, it was like so much cheating because even though that back leg is behind you, it's still holding on to something and you're still engaging it, right. right? So what we want you to do is real, pure, unilateral work, meaning the other leg is out. It's not even holding on to anything. It's just the left leg. So do that with your yoga as well. And maps prime pro, uh, yeah, I think would be very beneficial to you. So if you don't have that, we'll send that to you. Cause I, there's I, some movements into that. I yeah. think you'll like and, and, and yoga is great, but I would rather see, um, 90, 90, uh, moves done before you do the leg training. And I would love to see assisted Miguel planes. So I did a, I did a, if you don't know what that is, I did a video on that on, um, Instagram. Said, I'm sorry. You said the assisted what? I didn't hear you. Assisted Miguel. What is it called? McGill. M C G I L L. And uh, and I did them on I I did them on our Mind Pump Media IG. Maybe and you hear me. I give credit to Squat University. And I'm actually talking about uh, when you and I think it's on our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. Also, I talk about when you're okay. down in a squat. It's really common for someone to have their their knee cave in on one side more than the other. And so that's what I'm I'm discussing. With this this movement is because there's a stability component in there there's a strength and control component in there uh this would be a really good way to kind of prime uh your hips and leg before you go into uh some of these exercises we're talking about now now this is now the the next things i'm going to recommend really are adding one percent okay to what you're going to do but what we want to do also is we want to maximize your central nervous system activation um and mitochondrial health this will help with some of these adaptations so uh, a little bit of caffeine before you work out, if you don't already, probably a good idea. Yeah, that's already, okay. it's already there. <laughs> All right, good. And then, and then if you don't take creatine, I think, and, and of course, this is- so- I do, I do Legion. Um, I okay. do the Legion per your guys' request. I mean, I've been All listening right. to you guys for a while, so I like a lot of your products, like I do Ned and a bunch of stuff. Um, so I do the Legion, but I do it, I do it usually, um, I, I don't do it every day. I'll take it maybe two to three times a week. Um, Basically, because I did, I felt it made me a little bloated, but which is what you have mentioned before on yeah. it. Um, are you, are you recommending I take it before? Yeah, no, you could take it, take it after your workout. Uh, before is fine too. Actually, it doesn't make a huge difference. Instead of taking it two or three days a week at, at the full dose, take it every day at half a dose or a quarter dose. I'd, I'd rather have you take it frequently and equal the same amount for the week than to take it less frequently at higher doses. And you may find if it's stomach bloat that you feel, sometimes this can happen with creatine, you may find that the smaller doses are a little bit easier. All right. All right. All right, Nicole, we're going to send you Maps Prime Pro if you don't already have that, okay? Oh, thank you so much. No problem. Sweet. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks awesome, for calling. Cool. Um, you really helped me a lot. I got a whole page of notes here. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. Thank so, you. All right, you guys. Right on. Have a good one. You, you too. too. You know, as a, I tell you what, as a as an early trainer, a client like that would terrify me. <laughs> I mean, it's just so I many, know, dude. you know, but as a, as a later on, that's the kind of client. Oh, I, I love this. Yeah. I love this because there's, um, and I know I, I can't see her and actually, but I know, uh, I know the little, like I guarantee you one of the things 
that she what she does is she's competitive. Listen to all the sports yep. she still yep. does. Yep. So she's probably when she's doing that weaker side, really trying yep. to muscle it Just up. Like barrels through. That's it. right. And so and she's probably shifting the left and right, and she's yep. not a, not helping the imbalance in pursuit of trying to get that leg stronger. And I, I know I'd have to tell her, like, listen, and that's why I was talking about the cushions. Like, oh, yeah. we're going to start with just a little mm-hmm. six-inch range of motion right now. Drilling the technique yes. is, is at the utmost importance here and the quality of the movement because we're, you know, we're so limited in terms of, like, making sure that we want to we want to really hone in on the right uh, type of movement. Yeah, and, and, you know, when we're dealing with – and, and here's why we were so adamant about like disengaging the other leg completely. This isn't necessarily what I would recommend to the average person with a typical muscle imbalance. But what we're dealing with here are structural issues that can't be changed. And this is an imbalance that has been trained for her entire life. Yes, yes. So, so she's so good. So her body's so yeah. good at compensating with the other side that if I have her right leg touch – something else, it's going to do something this without is, her even realizing. This yeah. is actually why I asked her if she was working out from home or the gym because this is actually a place where I love machines. Like this with leg extensions and a leg press machine right here uh, because I can keep the, her whole body stable and yeah. just yeah. really focus on one side of time. This, they, in fact, I mean, that's machines were originally designed for rehabilitation. Yeah. So mm-hmm. this is where they have tremendous value because it's going to lock the body yeah, in position. Fixed positions. Yeah, very fixed position. And I could really just, you know, isolate one side of her body. So that's why I asked that first because. It, I know that to your point, Sal. Like you know, even a Bulgarian split squat or a lunge, which is considered a unilateral movement, you still got that trail leg involved. Totally. And when mm-hmm. you've been your whole life, thirty years plus, you've taught yourself to use that other side to yeah, help right. out. It's not going to be yeah. completely you find your upper body it's, rotating. Yeah, and all it's kinds hard of to shut that off. Uh, and just by saying, "Hey, stop using that back yep. leg," yep. you know, so. Um, yeah, but I, you know, really excited to hear, uh, her how, progress. Yeah, right? her progress. So hopefully yeah. she reaches back out to us. Our next caller is Zach from New Jersey. Hey, what's up, Zach? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, wow. This is amazing. I can't believe I'm talking to you. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'm calling today because I unfortunately suffered an injury about a month ago. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly what happened uh, on the day of my injury. But before that, I feel like I should explain um, what I do for a living. I am a professional musician and the instrument that I play is the bassoon. Mm, Cool. Um, And the bassoon, I brought it here with me. It's a woodwind instrument, and it's in the low family of the woodwinds, mostly orchestral. Um, And playing it involves taking a big breath of air, holding it in, bracing my core, and then moving wind through a small opening. Um, And the opening creates resistance um, through a reed. Now, so that's what I do constantly. Um, on the day of my injury, though, I'll, I'll rewind it a bit. Um, I was at the gym and I was deadlifting heavy. Now, I probably was deadlifting a little too much, but I, I had lifted heavier prior to this and everything felt fine. I was lifting 305. Um, and I weigh 170 pounds, so I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, and everything felt fine. I felt no pain, no discomfort. My form was good, um, but I, I did that, and I might have deadlifted. I went down in weight after that. Then I did some barbell rows. Again, lighter weight, really focusing on form. Um, and after that, I did some kettlebell swings to end the workout. And I felt fine, didn't feel any discomfort. Then I went home and I started practicing my bassoon. And after about an hour of practicing, I felt pain down in my abdominals, like in my lower ab, um, and a little bit near possibly my inner thigh. 
And so my first thought was that, oh no, I, I have a hernia um, <laughs> and I freaked out. So for about a week, I was depressed. <laughs> I was like, no, I have a hernia. So I, w- I went to the doctor, the doctor checked me. He said, you don't have a hernia, which is a relief, but I strained my abs, um, which was kind of surprising to me. I didn't even know that I would be able to do something like that. Um, and now I'm, I'm basically asking you, do you have experience with abdominal strains? Um, and is it, I have not lifted weights for about four weeks. I haven't touched a weight, which is sad, but I'm trying to heal. Um, but also, could I be bracing incorrectly? Yeah. What do you think? It's yeah, a, this is actually more common than you think. Yeah, it's it? actually okay. So first off, t- two hold questions. on. I want to find out what you call yourself if you play bassoon. Are you a bassooner or bassoon- bassoonist? <laughs> I accept <laughs> both. I accept both for short. Uh, yeah, cool instrument, by the <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, it it's just yeah, random. I very like very it. cool instrument. Okay, so um, thank you. Here's a question. Two questions. One, who said it was an ab injury? Was it your was it your your primary care physician? Yes. Okay. It, it's probably. Uh, I mean, uh, he may be right. He or she may be right. It's probably a deeper core muscle yeah. because you pulled it while bracing and blowing. And so a lot of people might not know, but when you're, you're you're playing an instrument like the bassoon. You have to tr- create a tremendous amount of pressure mm-hmm. in your diaphragm and the the pelvic floor muscles Which and all the all deep part core of your muscles. Core. They all have to stabilize to push this air through. It's highly unlikely that you pulled your abs. It's much more likely that you pulled a deeper core muscle. Okay. So that makes a difference in terms of, you know, kind of how we'll, we'll, we'll handle this. Here's the second question. Did you by any chance, do you wear a weight belt when you lift deadlift and row and, and do exercises in the gym? I do not. Okay, good. Okay. So weight belt would be terrible for someone like you because it teaches the muscle recruitment pattern of you pushing out against the belt, mm-hmm. which is the opposite of what you do when you play the bassoon where you, you brace your core. It's probably a deep core muscle. And, you know, I hate to tell you this, but the best possible thing you can do right now, and it's a good thing it's not a, a, a hernia. Just rest it, recover. Is to, yeah, is just to rest it. And I would do light bracing exercises, light twisting and stretching exercises just to keep movement going on. But oftentimes when those deep core muscles get strained, they can take a little while uh, to heal, but it's not super uncommon. I mean, it's not uncommon, uh, actually. And I, it actually sounds like you just really fucking overdid it that day. I mean, that was a lot of stuff that- yeah, involves you, those muscles. Yeah, that involves those muscles, and you just overdid it. You strained it, and the best thing that we can do right now is to let it completely recover and heal. And then when you get back into training- um, I would actually incorporate some like very specific core training exercises, like drawing maneuvers and stomach vacuums mm-hmm. and exercises. Quadruped. Yeah, specific to that. Yep. And then knowing that this is your profession and, and you require so much of this this core strength is kind of being aware of that. Hey, if this is a day where I'm going to be practicing for an hour on the bassoon, it's probably not a good day to also be doing my kettlebell swings, my 350 pound deadlift, and re- really getting after it. If any, and especially when this is your profession. Um, and I know you have obviously fitness goals too, but if I was your coach, I would say, you know, Hey Zach, you know, today we got, you know, a show for an hour. You're going to be playing the bassoon. Let's not do 300 pounds of deadlifting today and your kettlebell swings. Let's do stuff to prepare you for your show tonight and make sure that you you're strong and healthy. So I think you just overdid it. Also, uh, I, I can tell you didn't follow any of our programs because rarely will we put deadlifts, rows and kettlebell swings in the same workout. That's a lot of lumbar, you know, stabilization required in one workout. I, if I'm going to deadlift, I almost, depending on the client, but for most people, I don't also do lots of swings in that same workout. So pick Mm -hmm. one or the other rows can sometimes be okay after deadlifts, but even then I often do a supported row. So and it, we'll explain what you like, so what he's saying I think you more layman's turn like you two you have a a heavy loaded hip hinge movement so you're going to fatigue that and then you go to an explosive 
I mean, you, you're you asking for a potential injury yeah. right there. I mean, that's like, that would be like doing really heavy squats and then following it up with like yeah. some ice skaters or explosive jump boxes. Like, well, anytime you do anything uh, explosive under fatigue, if you've already pre fatigued, that's right. uh, you know, that muscle group, it exposes, yeah, a potential for straining or. Uh, you know, some type of further injury to occur. Yeah. Here's a couple movements that I think might be okay for you to, to try, okay? You can try pelvic tilts on the floor uh, just to just start to engage the, the pelvis and start to get some move. And that's a very easy exercise. You lay flat on your back, your knees bent. You'll have a natural curve in the low back. And then just tilt your pelvis so that your back, your low back flattens against the floor and then let it arch and then flatten and then let it arch, okay? Another exercise would be quadruped. Uh, where you're on your hands and knees, you extend your left arm out and your right leg back. We have YouTube videos on all these, by the way, so we'll make sure we link these in the show. So quadruped would be another good exercise. And then lastly, and again, test all these out before you go and, and work them, okay? So the ones I'm recommending, they still might not be appropriate for you if they don't feel right. But the other exercise I would try with you would be a counter rotation exercise. So you can get a resistance band, mm -hmm. anchor it to something, Hold the stand yeah. up tall, hold the band close pale, to your body. Of press. Yeah, and then just bring it out in front of you so it's a little bit more. You're not twisting or anything. You're just resisting a little bit of the rotation. I think Justin rotation. and I did a yeah, video on a YouTube, YouTube on video. That. Yes. I mean, we're, we're, let's put them on a program. I mean, I think uh, when you're feeling better and healthy, Matt's performance sounds like with the direction yeah. of the mm -hmm. movements you guys are training him in, and I think he'd get great benefit from. Totally. Matt's Z performance. Zach, are you, have you followed any of our programs before? You know, I, I have Matt's aesthetic. Um, but I purchased it before I really knew about the right order of things. Um, so I haven't followed it completely yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, mass performance would be actually, uh, Adam, that was a great uh, recommendation. So once you're able to get back into training, mm -hmm. I would go more maps performance and, uh, you know, be very careful with exercise order. I mean, if you follow our program, you'll be okay for the most part, but Always be very careful. I, I know sometimes people, they, they don't understand the nuances of exercise programming. Like, like I said, I almost never would have someone do a kettlebell swing and a deadlift in the same workout. There are exceptions to that, but almost never would I do that well, with the average then he, person. Then he went on to go play the bassoon all night long, too. So, I mean, you literally, I mean, I mean, you, I don't know too many people that would have done all that and not actually strain and hurt themselves. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you train the bassoon and you probably train core more than the average person, you probably handled it better than most people would have. It sure. could have been really bad for somebody who... Dude, can we just get like a little taste? Can we get... Oh, like, absolutely. I, just uh, want, yeah. I want something. I want to hear hear you play. Don't get hurt yeah, though, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope the audio is okay with this. But Can you play uh, something like Metallica or something like yeah, that? No. <laughs> Metallica, Adam, Adam has a bong that looks just like that, by the way. I do. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Except Adam's bong is bigger, to be honest. Yeah, we, we've all hit it. <laughs> well, let's see. This is what it sounds like. All right, let's hear it. That's, that's great, you know that what? You know like what? That that's not, is that so? Is that the instrument that's played a lot when you hear that kind of ominous music in like movies and scary movies and stuff like that? Is that what do you think they use? Is it, what, is scary? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Right. It sounds like. Jaws. That's that's awesome, that's Zach. Great, Zach. That's the spoon. Thanks, man. Hey, we're gonna All we're right. gonna we're gonna send you over Maps Performance, okay? Thank you so much, guys. No problem. Man. Awesome. Right. Thank you, Zach. Keep rocking, man. Yeah, I, I will say this. Justin probably knows that certain instruments, especially some of the classical instruments, they like, they actually require a tremendous amount of like yes. muscle control and a lot of breath work. It's, oh, it's pretty demanding. Well, isn't that isn't that pretty in all like uh, what read? would read yeah. uh like instruments, right? I, mm -hmm. I mean I mean I tried to play the saxophone when I was a kid and I remember oh, yeah. how much like 
you know, you, strength you have to have in your cheeks and yes. to be able to hold your core. Like, Dude, yeah, Ethan plays a trumpet, and yeah, it requires just a whole lot of pressure. Oh, yeah, I played the trumpet, and I remember that. But you know what? It's almost all instruments. Even the guitar. Mm. Like, if you've ever, pr- I, I literally practiced the guitar for like a week, yeah. and I remember my fingers were oh, ruined. From you got to build calluses. Yeah, yeah it's, so, it's totally its own skill. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, great. The, I mean, I think it was you, Sal, who pointed it out. I mean. uh I it, that actually didn't that trigger didn't even go off for me when he said the exercise order. Yeah, but holy shit. Yeah, you, you heavy ass deadlifts, rows, and then kettlebell swings. Yeah, talk about fatiguing the shit out of the core. Yeah, and then going and doing an explosive swing. Like I mean, and, and then he could have been okay, but then he pressed it even further with the bassooning all night yeah. long. Yeah, this this is just highlights the, that, the importance of exercise order. Oh, exercise order and programming. It. I know some people are like, "What's the difference?" And it's all the same exercises in your work. No. no, it makes a huge difference. This is the difference between an effective workout and one that is not effective. Oftentimes, they have the same exercises in them, and you look at them and you go, "Well, this one has squats. This one has squats. They must be the same." No, they're not. The the programming makes a huge difference. You know, this is this is a actually kind of cool that we we got a quote. You know, such a unique question like this because we always get questions about. Could you guys explain how you write your programs? Oh and this God. is why it's so difficult to explain because this does. It's not like we go, oh, there might be a bassoon guy who's going to be playing. So <laughs> it's just that there's some very there's yeah. general rules. Like I'm you always would, thinking like that. You wouldn't want to put those things <laughs> back to back in an extra. It doesn't mean you couldn't. It doesn't mean that it's wrong necessarily, but you know this is where the experience thing comes in. As you think about stuff, where man, I don't know if I want to fatigue this muscle and then do this and then go follow by that. So we take into consideration all that stuff when we put the exercises in the programming. Totally. So there's little nuanced things like that that are hard to explain when you're talking in general. But when you get a very specific question like that, uh, such a great point. It's exactly how you know right away. Like you didn't follow one of our programs because that wouldn't happen. I would never write one like that. Yeah. Our next caller is Way from Australia. Hey, what's up, Way? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How's it going? Um, so my initial question I asked included but was not limited to whether I should begin looking for a different coach who was qualified up to the standards insofar as my goals were concerned. Um, so like my current coach, I feel like does not really possess the positive knowledge regarding diet and fitness in the academic sense. Um, yeah, in our most recent check-in, I interrogated a notion about time under tension and like high tempo in virtually all of my exercises. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to know what you guys thought. Perhaps you guys have like an abstract idea of um, where the preponderance of studies lie in regards to the efficacy of time under tension for building muscle. Okay. It, now, what, what are you hiring this coach for? I see in your original question that you sent us that it looks like yeah. you're trying to compete in a, Physique competition? Natural, natural classic physique, yes. Okay, so you got yourself a coach that trains people to compete, correct? Um, He has, like, regular clients, but he himself has competed. So I thought that, you know, with this, with this like, combination of experience and, like, um, experience on stage and experience with other clients, I thought, you know, we might do well together. Well, I tell you what, Way. So it's something I learned when uh, I, we started Mind Pump and I started working with Adam. So Adam... Obviously, a trainer, lots of experience like I had uh, training everyday people, but also competed as a pro. And I can't wait to hear what he says. But what I got from working with him was, holy cow, there's a lot more to competing than just you know working out and diet that I would have never known because I didn't have the experience coaching other people to compete. There's a big difference between coaching yourself and coaching other people. Um, so I'm going to defer to Adam because this is something he's very experienced well, in. Well, first of all, because uh, you're asking a question around time under tension, and we can get into all that detail, but I'll, I'll tell you right away that uh, a majority of the coaches, especially online coaches in the in the bodybuilding space, are pretty terrible. Um, even the ones that have tremendous experience, pros, even the ones that have been on the Olympia stage, like – you know, a, a lot of these guys, uh, they have figured it out for themselves what they need to do to get their bodies to where, uh, you know, where they can win a show. And that does not mean that they are good at coaching another person, nor does it mean they know probably the healthiest and smartest approach either. So if you have to, if you're already questioning uh, his knowledge or what he's telling you, you're, you're probably, your gut instincts are probably right. He's probably 
not very good at what he's doing because a, a really good coach, if he's telling you, no, don't do this, or hey, you should do this, should also be able to back it up on uh, wh why we're doing this from a science yeah. perspective. I mean, so, and here's the thing too, you have to keep in mind that uh, competitive bodybuilding is a sport. I know some people like to argue that and say it's not. Yes, it is. It's a sport. And so it, it's not healthy technically for you. So there's going to be some things that are conflicting with science that supports the healthiest or the best way to do things also. So there's this is a bit nuanced, right? It's not as cut and dry as like, here's what the science says. And, and so this is what you should do. Well, you know, you're, you're playing a sport and, you know, sports aren't healthy for the body. And so sometimes you're doing things to manipulate the look of your body uh, more so than following the science on what the science says is the healthiest or the best approach. So that it, it is a bit nuanced with that, but I would be really weary of of somebody who you're already questioning, um, you know, their ability to explain to you uh, what it is. What is it specifically that you want to know about time under tension? Uh, what's your question around that? What is he saying to you, and what would you like to hear from us? Um. So from what I've gathered so far, like studies just indicate that as long as you're controlling the weight on the descents, um, it, it will contribute as much as, you know, counting the seconds, you know, counting down the seconds. So he asked like, he asked me on like three second, four second eccentrics on like my compound movements. So like on the squats, I'm lifting like more than say, say like up to, or more than 60% of my one rep max. Right. And, um, he asked me on like, three seconds, three second eccentrics for more than like eight reps. So I found that it, it might have impaired my ability to recover a little bit as well as might have availed in like the development of pain in my knee. Okay. You're the, you're, it just might be, it, look, you might be doing too much. And yeah. As you say, it's probably more likely his training protocol on yeah. how much volume you're doing is probably hurting you more than manipulating the tempo. Cause yeah, it, you could play with eight, Go ahead. All of my workouts exceed like the two hour mark. Oh, so yeah. sometimes I'm going. <laughs> yes. yeah. Okay. So there's your indication right there. <laughs> right, right there. So bro. here's a, here's a, yeah. here's a big issue that I've seen with coaches uh, is that they are, they, they work in a world where the majority of the people that they work with and train around are enhanced by performance enhancing substances, which really they greatly increase your recovery and your ability to train hard and long and you're natural. You said you're a natural. Uh, yeah. okay. he, he knows that too. He knows I'm a natty. Yeah, I know. They know that. But they're so, they can be so skewed in terms of, oh, no, he can handle this. Or you're young. Or you're working out. And well, or his knowledge is coming from his personal experience. I don't know. If, is he natural? Uh, I, I question. He, he was kind of dubious about it. But yeah. I think so he he's is. Prob <laughs> he's probably not natural himself. And right. he's because giving. Because he has like veins popping out of his like quads and. Like this is all over, like from his head to toe. So here's here, here's what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna send you our our maps aesthetic pro, uh, yeah, program. Just follow that. That is that is actually inspired by the way I used to train my body to get me all the way to the professional level. And by the way, I was on drugs. So and I guarantee the volume is nowhere near what you're doing right now. I didn't train two hour training sessions in the gym, uh, even when I was on high doses of PEDs and a pro men's physique athlete on year number four for me, I wasn't even training like that. So the the idea that a natural athlete uh, is training in the gym five to seven days a week for two hours a, a training session, and then you're also giving me feedback that your, your, your knees hurt and shit, well, yeah, no fucking shit. You know, you're you're hammering the shit out of your body, and the the recovery process, and the amount of volume you're doing is ex extremely important to your your results. And if your joints are talking to you, um, it's pretty obvious to what's going on. And it sounds like he's not well versed enough, or experienced, or educated enough to be able to uh, explain that to you. That that's what's going on. But it's pretty obvious to me that you, that's what's going on. And it's less to do with what what the research and literature says around time under tension, what's better or not better. I could make you do eight second squats and not hurt your knees. But I also know that if I am going to increase the intensity on an exercise by slowing down the tempo, I'm going to also modify your training 
elsewhere so I don't overdo it somewhere else. So, mm. And it sounds like he's probably not doing that. So it doesn't sound like he's a very good coach. We wrote those programs, MAPS Aesthetic, with the, in, the, the intent of helping somebody get ready for stage. And so that you know, we're going to send that to you for free so you'll have it. And you can literally follow that for a week and get a feel of what the volume of training yeah. that you should be doing compared to probably what he's got you doing. And way in MAPS Aesthetic, there's uh, focus sessions which allow you to individualize the workout so you can focus on your weak body parts, okay? So I, you're, follow MAPS Aesthetic as it's written out. Do focus sessions for one or two body parts that you need special attention on. As far as diet is concerned, here's where it can get really tricky, because especially pre-contest diet or diet leading up to a show. This is where it can get a bit tricky. I would look at the network that Lane Norton works with because the coaches that work under him or the people that are associated with him, they do it the best way. They don't they don't go into the the fads and the trends and the weird shit. They do things that are science based, that are as healthy as you could possibly get, while also looking great on stage. So look in his network for people to work with nutrition. And then just follow Maps Aesthetic. I, the, I would not listen to this coach anymore. Because yeah. wait, wait, what's your what's your Instagram handle? Uh, Shredded Bale. Shredded. B a l e. No space or anything. Okay. Yeah. I, I got you. I got you. All right. Perfect. We'll take care of that for you, and we'll send over you uh, mm. Maps Aesthetic. Okay. All right. Cheers, guys. All right, brother. All right. Thank you. I wonder what his favorite protein is. Oh my god. You know, <laughs> I tell you what. <laughs> you got to love though, uh, you know, um this idea that it, like it, this is nothing to do with the the science around time and attention. No, right? he's doing freaking way too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's great that that was a gave him, you know, the, the clued him in on the, maybe this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, but the having him do three second, five second, eight second, two second. That's you know, not the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's not the problem here at all. He's just trying to do his own research now to kind of figure it out and piece it together. He needs to find a coach that can just really point directly like, here's what we need to do. This is so unbelievably common. I mean, it was what motivated me. to. So I had no intentions of coaching online. So when I first started competing and some of that it was literally for what we were doing it was the goal was when i got into competing it was can i'm going to show the You're world build a social media yeah, i'm going to build a following to show people i know what the fuck i'm doing that is going to give me a network of people and then i'm going to sell them this app that Justin and i were building obviously that never happened but that was the goal i a business a literally a six-figure business fell in my lap because it was so fucking easy to help all these people that were competing because there's so many bad fucking coaches. Terrible. There are so many coaches who, because they got on stage themselves and even or got to the pro level or even got to the Olympia stage, that all these young kids that are aspiring to be like them just assume that they gotta know what they're they know what they're talking about. And many of them don't know shit. Nothing. They they know enough to get them to that. And honestly, most of them, the two biggest factors that have given them their success is their consistency. Because if you do any, even at, we've said this before on the show, right? A subpar program done consistently is better than a, a superior program done inconsistently. And if you made it to the Olympia stage, if you made it to a pro, you have unbelievable discipline. The discipline it, it has taken anybody, I don't care what level or what your natural gifts or how much drugs you take, that, that is the, the number one factor. And then the second one is drugs. You're taking so many drugs that you can get away with poor programming. You can get away with poor diet. And, and you throw genetics on top of that and it makes yeah. it even even crazier. So I've, see, I've seen some of the craziest recommendations. <sighs> uh, workouts, terrible. The diet stuff that I've seen some of these coaches recommend. Oh, yeah. Downright. It's real damage. Oh, downright dangerous. And then I'm not an expert on, you know, how you should use performance enhancing drugs. But I know enough to when I've seen some, I've had people show me and I look at the stuff and I go, oh, my gosh, you're an amateur. What are you doing taking these insane combinations of drugs? My coach told me, you know, mm -hmm. I saw this one girl. She was on enough. Uh, hormones to eat. I mean, she was transitioning to become a man. She didn't realize it. She thought she was just trying to get on stage. It's really, really scary. So watch out for these. User <laughs> these, beware. That's it. Look, if you like our information, if you like our podcast, you want to learn more, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our guides. We got guides that can help you with all kinds of fitness goals. You can also find us all on Instagram, right? So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. 
Me at Mind Pump Salon. Adam at Mind Pump Adam. 